box in a box. I think this is for a keg to kick transfer. That's pretty cool. Some various parts. Some firm cap. A syringe. Power cable. These you hook up the two ball lock connectors for cleaning. Uh, Ethernet cable. A little cleaning brush. Got a cat. All right, so no work today. Get to finish setting up the Z1. Hopefully brew a batch on there. So let's get to it. All right, so we have all these parts. Get this thing put together. The instructions. Picnic tap, I need that. thing that comes with it for I think that's when you're actually brewing this little washer came off of something keg sleeve kind of disappointed that this didn't have some cool graphics on it or something I did buy one of the first did one of the first pre-orders on the on the Z1 Thought they'd make this a little cooler, but that's all right. So let's see. Izzy's gonna help us out. So guessing there should be some screws. Yep, little pack screws. Uh, oh, cool, a little Torx driver to assemble with. Syringe for something. A little short piece of polycarbonate tubing. 
Some O rings. Some grommets. Something. Some firm cap. Some. These are probably extra little rubber feet to go on the bottom of the Z1. A little foam thing for the. Whatever that thing's called. Alright, I don't think I need any of this right now. So, alright. Also came with a dual liquid line, dual, dual sided liquid line. I'm guessing for uh, keg, keg, keg to keg transfers after fermentation. That's pretty cool. That'll make it a little cleaner than using an auto siphon. That'd be nice. So, a little cleaning brush. Power cable. All right, the Z1, so it's just 120 volts. Ethernet cable, I think I'll need that. So cat hair all over my keg. Koozie already. Okay. Got some black screws. And some stainless steel screws. It says to use stainless steel screws in front. Right there. And the black screws just go on sides. If they're positioned correctly. There we go. It's all real exciting stuff here. Driving in some screws. Uh, one thing when you're threading in machine screws like this, so it's a good idea to Rotate them backwards until you feel the threads grab. That'll keep you from getting cross-threaded. Okay. Looks like I've got some extra screws left over too. The top cover of the step filter has, I don't know if you can see it here, these, these holes here. I guess those correspond to the compartments inside the filter. So when it's brewing, a little wand moves around and lines up with those to circulate the wort through. Just guessing how this goes together. It's kind of how it came out of the box. There's a screen with a rubber seal around it. it. Looks like it goes in the bottom of the pop chamber on the step filter. Right here, it's got a little groove there that corresponds with that part. You got your containers with little hot baskets. Put your hops and all your additions in. I think it faces that way. All right, in the bottom of the green compartment here. Got another screen, a couple of pull tabs, a rubber, 
rubber around the outside of it. Sits down just like that. You just put the grain in on top of it. Looks like it makes a pretty good seal. And put your grains in. And this top screen. Uh, top screen has a little groove here. Looks like where it goes along this lip here to separate the hop compartment. Yep. It's got little notches here on the sides and on the front. Correspond with little tabs on the step filter. So this is nice. It's uh, definitely good, solid quality. It took over a year from when I pre-ordered it to, to get it and got a lot of emails talking about uh, different manufacturing processes and how they had to switch vendors and troubleshoot. So looks like it was worth the wait for sure. And it's the unit itself is really heavy. I'm kind of surprised. A lot heavier than I thought it would be. It feels uh, really substantial. It's a nice, nice little appliance. Uh, all right, on the bottom here is uh, a rubber mat. That, I don't know if that comes out or not. Doesn't look like it does. Doesn't seem to sit perfectly flush either. I don't know if it really matters. And step filter goes in like so. supposed to face that way it's got an extra little you see that little bump there that uh, corresponds to a little notch on the side of the case so try and flatten that out as much as I can That's really going to affect anything. It probably should sit flatter than that, though. I would think. Oh. So. Lid for the step filter. A little corresponding corresponding holes there. So I think this might be backwards actually. seems better because it looks like there is supposed to be some kind of tube that goes down this one you can see that right there it looks like it's got a little space for probably that polycarbonate tube to go down into let's find out got the online user's manual assembly Ok, 
Okay, so there is a drain tube, which that's what that's gotta be. A drain tube grommet. Looks like you get two of them. That's nice. That goes like so. Oh, yeah. Clips right into that. That goes down like that. Nice snug fit. Easy. All right, what else? Additional equipment recommended. Refractometer, homebrew draft system, digital scale, small digital scale, homebrew specific alkaline cleansers such as powdered brewery wash, PUW for cleaning kegs. Do not use for cleaning cycles or plastic components. So don't use PBW on the plastic. Homebrew specific sanitizer, star sand, never use bleach. Who uses bleach? Food grade gypsum and calcium chloride in Irish moss or whirl flock tablets. It's normal. 15 millimeter wrench or socket for disassembling keg posts, keg lube, two five gallon food grade plastic buckets. All right. Anything we missed? Yeah. All right, to connect to Wi-Fi, power on your Z. So we need the power cable. Plugs in right there. And it's a little loose. I think it'll matter. I'm guessing it should be in the off position. It's back in there pretty snug. You have to tilt the the step filter forward just a little bit to get over that uh, get over the lip with that grommet for the drain tube. So, all right, I'm gonna go flip that switch back, and yeah, not connected. tavern sorry you guys can't see the password but you can see Lou this looks like it's run through, running through an update process after you type in your Wi-Fi password, there's just a little check mark you have to scroll over to. There's not like an extra button to accept the password. So I accidentally exited it out and had to redo it over again. All right, we're scanning something. to go to picobrew.com slash new z and i already have a pico brew account so all right from the menu here we are going to pick the z series product id and registration code 
That is that number that was on the screen, A96. C and we should name it something. We named it the No Eyed Square Guy. Anyone watching 12 ounce mouse will know. I let it. Where will you bring your Z series? Why do we care? First, the device you're activating is meant to brew beer very precisely, we aim to improve after analyzing, blah, 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 and stuff, and whatever. Oh, there's a, there's a brew map. That's the second reason. So they want to show off where we're brewing on the brew map. So if anyone's watching this, you guys can come over to my house and hang out. I don't know. All right, so it gives you the option where you can show your exact location on the map, show in the nearest city, don't show brews from this machine at all. Let's go from the nearest city. Add this Z-Series to my account. Added successfully. So that takes you to the brew marketplace. So. On the screen here, if you can see that, we have my recipes and Pico packs. Pico still, I have to get one of those. Sous vide. Coffee. Do love cold brew, so we're using this for some cold brew, I'm sure. Utilities, settings, about. Let's see what we have for my recipes. No recipes found. Awesome. And now we've got to run a rinse cycle before we do anything. So first thing is it wants me to wash and rinse or clean in the dishwasher. The top mash screen, bottom mash screen, adjunct screen, hops, cages, and lids, and adjunct insert. And set aside to dry. So let's do that. So, to run a rinse cycle, stop it. <clears throat> Fill your keg with approximately two gallons of clean hot tap water. Place the keg on the floor or on the counter next to your Z. Connect the black ball lock fitting to the keg post labeled out. 
Lift the outer ring of the ball lock fitting, place it on the appropriate keg post, press down firmly, hook up the keg post. Okay. So, we have the black ball lock. I'm gonna leave the keg down here on the floor. Out, in. And then we have to attach a keg wand to the gray ball lock fitting. So, keg wand, where did those go? There they are, these guys here. Attaches like so. And this is just gonna sit over here. It says to use a bucket, I'm gonna use this stainless steel kettle. So, power on the Z. Gonna go down to utilities. And we're gonna run a root cycle. Saying something different here, but we are gonna go ahead and follow the owner's manual. Continue. Yep. Yep. And looks like it's going to run for about ten minutes. So it is pulling the water from the keg. And it's going up through here, through the little inline filter guy, into the Z1. Don't know that it's doing anything inside. It's just the internal part. Then it comes out through there. Down, that's got another something. I'm not sure what that is. And down here and out into the kettle or bucket or whatever you're using to catch the wastewater. That's doing something in there. Like it's all done with the rinse cycle. It wants me to remove and wash the step filter again. All right. It's kind of a lot of water left over in there. I wonder if that's supposed to be like that. Liquid that splashed back into there. I don't know if that's a problem or not. Clean and reinstall the inline filter. So the inline filter needs to be cleaned and reinstalled too. Looks like this just threads off. There's a bit of liquid down in there. And that just pops out, a little, little stainless mesh filter. Just pops on like that. And that tightens down just like that. Alright, 
now it looks like it's ready to brew.